Professor, my good friend, uh, Dr. Abhishek Singhvi, has marshaled the legal arguments and placed the facts before this House <coughs> and appeal to them, appeal to the House and appeal to the Treasury benches not to proceed with this bill because this bill is unconstitutional. Now, I can understand the full-throated support given by the BJP. But what I do not understand is the half-hearted support extended by two of my learned friends, two of my learned friends representing the BJD and the YRCP. They know that this is unconstitutional. I think the law, law ministry knows it is unconstitutional. It's like a moth which burnt once when it approaches a fire, again approaches the same fire, and again approaches the same fire because it's a moth. Now, this government tried it once. It failed. It tried it a second time. It failed. And you're trying it a third time. I wish you what you will get, a spectacular failure when this bill is taken up. Be that as it may. I'm not getting into the legal arguments because we are not a court of law, nor I'm sure anyone in the chair wants to be a judge. We are the Council of States. We are duty-bound to protect the rights of states, rights of union territory. We are not representing an individual parliamentary constituency. I am representing a state. Each one of my learned friends is representing a state. And collectively, we should represent all the states of India. What are we? Are we a union of states? Or are we going to become a union of moth-eaten states? Or a union of moth-eaten union territories? Or a union of municipalities? Please remember the old dictum, no taxation without representation. That's the fundamental premise of a representative and parliamentary democracy. Delhi has, according to the figures I source today, 3.17 crore people. Now, the 3.17 crore elect a government. They elect a government to govern them, to take decisions on their behalf. The underlying premise is we are a representative and parliamentary democracy. You may ask me, where are those words, words in the Constitution? Those words are in the Constitution. The magic words are that there shall be a council of ministers with the chief minister at its head to aid and advise the lieutenant governor. The words aid and advice is not some kind of a friendly advice. Aid and advice has a long constitutional history. Aid and advice means the real power is in the council of ministers. The LG exercises formal power. The real power is with the ministers of the government. The formal power is with the president of India. Aid and advice is magical words. What we are doing today is subverting the three magical words, aid and advice. Now, people are watching us. It's not only the 
uh, 200 odd members in this house. People of Delhi are watching us. They will watch us today on television, on YouTube. They will know that this government is attempting to take away the real power of the elected representatives and put it in the hands of bureaucrats. Now, I asked in a tweet, and I'll ask this question. What is the merit you file with the bill? Leave alone the constitutional aspects. What is the merit you file? Is there merit in a three-member authority where two officers will constitute a majority and overrule the chief minister? Is there merit when two members of the three constitute a quorum, they can even call a meeting, hold a meeting, without the chief minister? Is there merit that even if a decision is taken unanimously, the LG can overrule it? Is there merit that the member secretary, who is the principal secretary of home, will convene a meeting with or without the chief minister? What is the merit? What is the merit? I heard you on television. I heard the honorable member on television. I didn't find you mention any merit in any clause of this bill. You heard me. I heard you also. And I was even more disappointed. <laughs> Therefore, what is the merit? What is the merit? What is the merit? What is the merit and what is the merit in this clause? What is the what is the what is the merit in any clause? There is which which class which class which class has any no, merit no, in it? I, I would urge the honourable member uh, to to get into a groove that does not, not invite. We are the constitutionality. I am saying, irrespective of the constitutionality, which no, sir, class has sir, any merit? Sir, you went on a tangent, physically and thoughtfully. Therefore, the honourable member had an occasion to be on his feet. Very I would urge you to confine to that level. Very well, this is my view. It is expected of you, sir. No, no, I have great respect for their view. All I am saying is, I didn't find them point out the merit in the clause of the bill irrespective of the constitution. So we have a bill today which the government thinks is the model. Model for Delhi. They had invented a model for Jammu and Kashmir, and that is in court today. Please remember, we always talk about breakdown of the constitution of India, breakdown of constitutional governance. Article 355, 356 speaks about breakdown of the constitutional machinery. What are we doing today? We are breaking the constitutional machinery. What did you do as a finance by passing this bill, by passing this bill, passing, by passing this bill, we are breaking the constitutional machinery is envisaged. We broke it on 5th of August 2019 in Kashmir, divided a state into two union territories, and sending a chill in the spines of every state that every st any state can be broken into, un into union territories. What are we doing today? We are breaking, we are breaking the constitutional machinery. Sir, honorable member, let, honorable me, member. Let, me, let, me, let me end by saying, My while, I, while I endorse, while, while, I endorse while, while, I, while I endorse, while I endorse, while I endorse whatever my good friend Dr. Singhvi said about the constitutionality, and there is another forum mutually argue. Please remember, please remember, you have no constitutional authority to pass this bill be that as it may, you have not even a moral authority to pass this bill. Yes. Yes. The Treasury benches, when did they last win an election in Delhi? Fifteen years, Mrs. Sheila Dixit was chief minister. I think there were two or three lieutenant governors. Please One minute. Two. two or three lieutenant governors, and I was home minister for a while. Never once did the present uh, act, present arrangement, come in the way of Mrs. Sheila Dixit functioning as perhaps one of the best chief ministers of this country. Shri Mahesh Jetland. Uh, ju just one, one minute, one Thank minute. You. I asked you before I started, uh, you said 10 minutes, therefore I'm speaking. 
Uh, it's not 10 minutes yet. Sir, nine it's minutes. Ten it's minutes. It's nine minutes. It's nine, nine minutes. Sir, it's not you 10 said minutes. If I, sir, uh, my, now, my when did, is, when did the BJP win an election? Everyone needs support of the, Jairam. When did the BJP last win an election? They won an election before 1998. Yes. 1998 to 15 years, Congress government was there. And after 2013, it's the AAP government. You won an election 25 years ago. What moral rights have you to speak for the people Sorry, of Delhi sir. and say this is what the people of Delhi want? Yeah. This is not what the people of Delhi want. This is not what the people of Delhi want.